Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at this. I am so excited because I've been looking at this design for quite some time. This is the high grade iron blooded orphans Oatlinde and as you can tell from that box right there it's in green so that means it is a premium Bandai exclusive. I got mine through Bayi. You can too and I'll throw a link down there in the description and this might just be the most fancy dapper pimpernel of a Gundam I have ever seen and it's not a Gundam it's a Valkyrie frame but man does this thing look awesome? Anyway, let's get right on back into the build because I love this thing two bits. So when it comes to the build of high-grade iron-blooded orphans kits, they're definitely a mixed bag. The Gundams can be a little bit problematic, the Graces, their armor can fall off, and they're all great but all require a little bit of extra effort. That is besides some of the Volcuria frames, at least the ones like the Grimger, the big old guy, the Helmwig grind car that can be a little bit touch and go, it's still awesome, but these ones are so so good and that goes for this one too. As usual there's not a lot of runners inside of the box, that is usually the case with iron blooded orphans but you do get a lot of payoff for what is in here. We get five runners but it's essentially four main runners and one mini runner. The only ones we would have seen on the Grimjard before the Valkyria frame, that's B and E which is a couple of pipes from the chest. Besides that it's all new for this kit right here. We do have some polycaps as well as a couple of stickers but the sticker situation is really not that bad. The build here is fantastic as all Valkyria frames are. Just like in usual Iron Blooded Orphan style you build up the frame first. This frame, the Valkyria frame, is vastly superior superior to any other high grade frame. The other high grade frame, I guess, being the Gundam frame. This one's better. Better than the Grey's one too, because it's more detailed. Nothing needs to be repaired, fixed, or tightened up in this kit before putting it together, and once you've got that frame put together, you just pop the armor onto it. The armor in here is a kind of mint green or almost bluey-ish green, that real Jeggen kind of color. We've got some white which has a little bit of a shininess to it and some yellow detailing for all over this. This builds up so so nicely. It is a little bit on the asymmetric style which kind of makes sense. This is from Gecko like we would have seen the Astroth and also asymmetrical bunch of kits. We've got a pointy shoulder and a big shoulder and this just all goes together so so well. The only sticker we use on this is for the eyes. You have a choice of either eye stickers or a nice little chromed out one for behind the little visor. I went for the chromed out one. We've got a couple of black ones for on the chest but overall this is a great build and what can I say? I am mighty impressed. Even after so many years since the Grim Jird came out, these Volcuria frames still hold up. So now jumping into the aesthetics and what can I say, this is ridiculously cool. To take the Valkyria frame, give it a nice new color scheme and that asymmetrical design, it just looks so good. I can remember seeing this design announced and never thought it would get a kit. Sure it is P Bandai, but this is one of those kits that I feel P Bandai was designed for. Anyway, first off I'm going to get all of the accessories off of this kit. Uh, <laughs> whoops. I will mention the Volcuria frame is rock solid so all that I did lose was a foot and speaking of the feet they are a little bit on the dainty side, you might want to stand. First up there is the full 360 degree spin so you can see all of the detail for yourself and for the most part this kit is out of box built. I have used some of the stickers that I did panel on the face as well as just a part of the upper chest to bring out the detail but besides that this is exactly what this looks like, it does look incredible. For the most part, this is, I'd say, 95% color accurate. We are missing a couple of colors on the thrusters I will mention in a little bit. This is asymmetrical. We've got the shoulders looking different as well as both of the arms. According to the lore, this is because this particular suit used to wield a Danesleaf, which is a pretty cool bit of lore. Overall, it's got that dapper feather in the cap kind of look about it and those big pointed toes, this does look incredible. If those toes do throw you back a little bit to the Gundam Gremory, apparently that's because they do fight side by side. So popping the Otlinde down side by side with the art which I took off of the Gundam wiki, thanks to the absolute heroes that run that wiki because the art is always there, but that is what it looks like side by side. And from the front, this is pretty much 100% color accurate, which is always a plus. Giving it a little bit of a flip round to the back and there it is side by side with the rear art. And this is where you can see that there is a little bit of an issue with the color accuracy. It's not a big one by any margin and it's just that these little concentric circle things right here are meant to be thrusters in a grey color. That's a simple enough thing to paint up and even just panel lining it will give this same kind of impression. 
Also, the pipes right here down on the back of the legs, those are also meant to be in a white color. Besides that, absolutely perfect. The head right here is incredibly nicely detailed. We do have a nice little bit of a clear sticker in behind that visor, but we do have the choice of covering that up with a sticker that has a bit of an eye effect. So you do have the choice there. All of the yellow segments are color accurate out of box. I especially love the pluses up on the shoulder. They give a real kind of Knights Templar kind of night vibe to this particular suit. Just like we would have seen with the Grimjord, we do have some nice thrusters round back. These have a little bit of articulation to actually move them up and down like so, which changes the overall look of the suit a little bit. I always love me a mobile suit that has those pointy toes. These are some tiny, tiny feet. They barely actually touch the ground whatsoever. There isn't really much holding the toes in on the front there, so you can kind of see the joint, which isn't the most awesome, but still, for something so complex, it's been pulled off so well. If we move up even just a slight little bit there, the knees on this have been incredibly designed as well, showing the little circle part underneath and the green part, they just kind of move around that in such a cool way. Honestly, I could gush about this design for absolute hours, but I don't actually have absolute hours to do that. This just looks overall incredible. So it does come to the usual negative aspects of plastic models like the mold lines, seam lines and all of that sort of jazz, there really isn't much going on here. There are some hollow parts around back in places, you're not really going to notice them. Of course there is no under layer to any of the armor, but give that a quick spray of grey and it will look extremely premium. But overall this does look great, I'm not really seeing much in the lines of seam lines. The nub marks, well what can I say, I threw a royal, built this, threw it together literally between breakfast and lunch and that means I just kind of double snipped everything off without any extra cleaning and it just turned out incredibly incredibly well. I'm not really seeing much issues at all and there is no cleanup, no real detailing up besides the face and oh, overall I am impressed. The Volcuria frames have always been so good. So as for a bit of a size comparison, there it is side by side with your average size Gundam. So even though it does look a little bit slender, it still has a little bit of height to its advantage. So there it is beside the high grade Gundam Barbatos, Gundam Exia, and the high grade Gundam Ariel. Moving now into the accessories and here's absolutely everything that comes inside of the box with the high grade Otlinde. Now this is a 100% close quarters combat mech. So what we get in here is the Volcuria Double Blade. That is the double-ended glaive style version as well as a version where it's separated into two swords. The biggest item right here is the shield binder which is a pretty cool shoulder shield with some mysteries. And finally then we do get one alternate hand which is a widespread left hand. So when it comes to the hands in here, the first ones we've got are the standard Gundam dial holding hands that do exactly what you'd expect them to do and that is hold onto stuff. Swapping out the hands is simple, you just pop it like so and attach in the alternative one like so. Now I'm not sure if the actual Grimjord came with an alternate hand or not, but the sculpt on here is incredibly nice. This is off the new runner and there's something so kind of almost like natural and soft about it, which is pretty cool. So next up in here, I'm going to be taking a look at the glaive. So what it says inside the manual about the Volcuria double blade is that this is a double bladed weapon with one blade made with rare metals. It can be separated at the center and used as a pair of swords. It was created repurposing the firing mechanism of Dainsleaf. So just like the manual says, this is a double sided sword. One is made out of I assume a normal metal being the white side and the other side is made out of a rare metal being the yellow side. And I also assume this is the Dainsleaf's firing mechanism that opens and closes right here. How that actually affects the weapon, I'm not sure. There is a little line where this thing attaches together and thankfully Bandai doesn't actually make you nip it in half in order to have the two independent separate swords. So you just pop that into the hand like so. It is a circular shaft into a square hand so I'm not sure if this will end up rotating a lot on you while trying to pose and it just pops back in just like so. So this does definitely rotate around in the hand a little bit, not too much, that's not really that big of an issue, but however when I was trying to get this into a pose, I did find those big flared hip segments, those big bits of armor do kind of get in the way. These are really massive and are attached onto the hip joint, so when you move the actual legs, these move on the legs, on the hips, so they can clash with some armor parts, especially that big rear skirting armor. So like the manual did mention, there are two versions of this particular Volcure. Volcuria double blade. 
The other version is literally identical besides the fact that the two parts are separated on the runner. Thankfully Bandai didn't make it a one or the other type situation so you can actually build both. At first I saw the two bits of yellow plastic on the runner and I thought you could only build one or the other but thankfully you can build both. So when you're using the pair of swords version of this, this works out a lot simpler. You don't have to take off the back of any of the hands, they just slot in like so. I'm getting no issues with them rotating in the hands, but still getting some issues with those armor parts and the hips just flying off whenever I try to pose this. By the way, the base I'm actually throwing this onto, everyone asks all of the time, so this is the Good Smile Company Simple Stand. You get three of these for 1,200 yen, which is like nine euro now. These are a steal. Grab them while they're super cheap. But yeah, there it is in a pose. These weapons look absolutely awesome. The fact that they're asymmetrical, just like the design of the mecha itself, means that this just looks so, so nice. So the last piece of equipment we have in here is this. I'm getting some contrasting light onto it right here so you can see it is nicely detailed. Sadly, I didn't get a chance to panel line this up, but it does look very, very nice. This almost looks like a V-fin off an incredibly cool giant Gundam frame. This does have a little bit of a secret aspect to it. And that is this little bit in here. This is the attachment point, well, it just popped off anyway, attachment point for popping it on to the shoulder. But we do have this three millimeter hole down here, which is used for absolutely nothing. I guess it's meant to look like the bending point of an extending part or something, but that is 100% an attachable part right there. Also, this has a very modular looking aspect to the inside of it. I know that's mainly so it can move around and get into multiple positions, but I don't know, maybe Bandai is going to do something with this in future. Hopefully, while they're doing that, they'll also give us the legs to the damn Dantelion. The big legs. Attaching this on is simple enough. It can pop on you while you're trying to attach it, but no, that went on super well. And this really does add an extra dynamic flair and really accentuate the fact that this kit right here is extremely asymmetrical. So that, that's quite nice. This can move around a little bit so you can get some extra kind of poses out of it. So we've got rotating three millimeter pegs so you can spread it out ever so slightly like so which gives it and that gives it a kind of pointed effect so you can move this around quite a bit we do have two joints here as well so you can move it up like so but i do find that little ball joint tends to pop every now and then so let's see that's about as low as you can get it and then you can get it all the way up there and we do have rotation too so this even though it is somewhat simple at its core it is quite expressive but that ball joint it likes to pop so lastly now onto the articulation and this is rock solid the Valkyria frames have always been good solid kits now i found the Helmwig Reinkar, Helmwig Reinkar, I always get that name wrong, did loosen up a little bit over time but my Grimger did not well my first one kind of did because i stood on it but the other one the replacement, that's doing fine. So the overall posability right here is quite good, ignoring those hip armors. They really do get in the way and they tend to leverage off parts of the body like the legs, mainly the legs. Sometimes the feet just when you're trying to get the legs into any kind of pose. They really do hamstring this thing's ability to get into good low poses, even to just raise its legs in air. These are just weird. The way they're mounted onto the hips just doesn't work out. Besides that though, once I actually took it off, this was actually able to get down nice and low into the launch, has great ab crunch and overall looks dynamic and cool. I'm not gonna go through all of the articulation on it today, but I will try and do some over the top or as dramatic a poses as I can for the final spins right now. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. This one is very tough because at its core, it's a very, 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 very fancy, fancy kit. But the hip armors do get in the way. That is not necessarily a bad thing. At its core, the articulation isn't bad. It's just that it's got some over-designed silly hips, which kind of goes with the look. I kind of feel someone who'd go around in a mobile suit that looks like this would put on too many flamboyant aspects that would just get in the way of it being what it's meant to be. And that is a machine designed for war. But ignoring those aspects, it does everything absolutely perfectly and it is a fantastic kit. So that means for me, this is gold tier, which means it's it, well, better than I would expect from a high grade, especially one from the Iron-Blooded Orphans line. Out of box, this is essentially perfect. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, I got mine through Bai. Link is down there in the description. And if you're looking for any rare or hard to get Gompla, you will find that there. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time. 
As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Ten Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, or G95061, Ten Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.